not everybody gets depression that starts it. It's a, another reason why before you start a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, even if it's topical finasteride, you need baseline labs. So what do we think? Does finasteride and or dutasteride, do these two cause depression? The way to think about this is having a low androgen pool certainly can cause depression. And having a, a large shift in your progestogen pool can also cause depression. So there are multiple mechanisms by which finasteride and to some degree dutasteride can cause or worsen depression in those that are already at risk of it. For example, someone that is having a huge shift in um, a, a, neuro, a progestogenic neurosteroid, then yes, it could potentially get worse. If you took a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor or finasteride at the wrong time of your menstrual cycle, then you could potentially worsen PMS or PMDD. Um, but uh, not everybody gets depression that starts it. It's a, another reason why before you start a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, even if it's topical finasteride, you need baseline labs. Yeah, baseline labs are important. And kind of the two buckets I think about here are, like you said, there's your testosterone androgen pool and Certainly, we know that individuals who go on androgen deprivation therapy, they develop depression you know, quite commonly because you have a lack of androgens and they affect the way you feel to a very potent degree. Mm -hmm. So you have a sort of you know, androgen deprivation light or diet androgen deprivation therapy if you're already at a low net level of androgens. And the other being, um, we certainly know finasteride will kind of slowly drop off serum pregnenolone levels. Um, which in males you know, probably does contribute to that downstream allopregnanolone, certainly does if you are ingesting pregnenolone orally. Yeah. Um, and how much of that is blocked by the finasteride? I don't think there's a ton of studies there, uh, but certainly that may be why anxiety and depression can manifest whenever these things are introduced. Um, and then you also have to think about that individuals who are seeking treatment for hair loss are probably bothered or distressed by that to some degree, which is why they sought out treatment in the first place. Yeah. On that note, what would you rather be, bald or impotent? Well, I think one of the best ways to treat depression is to regrow someone's hair. That would make me happy if I was in that situation, which, in fact, I would argue every male that has circulating levels of androgens that are in an average male ratio is eventually going to develop androgenic alopecia. I think the statistics say somewhere around 80% by age 70 to 80. Yeah, it's about 10% per decade, and probably we're gonna see that accelerate a bit as people have lower and lower SHBGs and worse nutrient status. So yeah, by age 90, probably 90%. Yeah. You, I, have a, you have a Ronald Reagan once in a while yes. that gets away with it, but um, yeah. for most what of us- What was his stack? He was a dutasteride bro, I would bet. Maybe so. Um, I, don't, I don't know when he was that time, president, and I don't know exactly when it was approved. It was, so. it was the 1980s. So. <laughs> probably, probably not the research, unless he took the research chemical MK906. Maybe he took MK906. He was on MK before it was cool. Yeah. Uh, also on that note, I love asking individuals, whether they're friends or family, if they have, if they're concerned with their hair loss. Because a lot of people that are having their hair absolutely shredded say, I have great hair. I haven't lost any. This is true. People will deny, deny, deny until it is apparently obvious to everyone around them and they have to concede. So it's yep. great to chat about. And some people, they just don't know that there are options out there. So if you're losing your hair, then more than likely you can do something about it. Yeah. I also love the interaction with partners. And I'll use myself in this example because people like talking about themselves or maybe I think it's funny. But uh, yes, it is possible that your wife or your spouse can simultaneously say, well, you're not losing any hair at all. You don't need to do anything. And also say, if you lost your hair, then you'd be significantly less attractive. So there's that, there's that odd catch-22. The catch-22 is um, often your partner says, well, your hair is great. You shouldn't do anything about it. But by the time they're telling you to do something about it, it's borderline too late. Yeah. Prevention is the key when it comes to androgenic alopecia, at least for saving a lot of money. Um, I suppose if you have an unlimited budget and a lot of grafts, a lot of donor sites, then you can get a pretty good 
recovery from even a substantial amount of hair loss, but you're going to save yourself a lot of uh, money and time by starting earlier rather than later. Mm -hmm.